Corka with Tomas McCarthy on WLR. With Hooper Dolan Insurances. For business insurance you can rely on. More info at hooperdolan.ie. Welcome along to your weekly GA show, Lorna Porca, here on WLR, with thanks to Hooper Dolan Insurances, the Mal Warford. Tomas McCarthy here till 7 o'clock. Coming up, new Desha hurling boss Liam Cahill on why he chose Warford, his management style, and his vision for 2020. Tony Ryan from the Dungarvan Observer will preview Sunday's senior football semi finals as well as the Western Intermediate Hurling Decider. Dunhill boss Sean Power on Sunday's Eastern final against Valley Gunner, and WLR's Kieran O'Connor will pay tribute to the late David Welsh. Well, former Tipperary All Star Liam Cahill was ratified as a new Warford senior hurling manager on a two year term on Monday night. The Ballingarry man has steered the Premier County to All Ireland glory at minor under 21 and under 20 grades. He will be assisted by hurling coach Michael Beavens from Tumivara, with two more selectors from Waterford to be added at a later date. But on Tuesday morning, Cal gave his first interview to WLR's Liz Reddy, and she asked him firstly about how his appointment came about. I received a phone call from uh, a member of the of the selection committee, and um, I suppose Liz, after. After going through the process, I have to say that uh, I was really, really encouraged by the manner in which that selection committee went about their business. Um, for me, they asked all the right questions, and uh, the decision was an easy one at the end for me, whether or not I, I wanted to pursue the option of becoming the next Waterford Senior Hurling Manager when the, when the opportunity presented itself. And uh, I'm really, really thrilled out to, to have made the selection or to be uh, to be made the decision uh, uh, going forward and really looking forward to the task in hand. Um, you say you were approached, but had you thought about it when Pork Fanning um, resigned from the post? Well, it's from from the outside looking in, you'd always be looking at what but hurling and you'd be hurling and you'd be saying like, you know, these these boys have lots and lots of potential and I was really flattered as much when the opportunity presented itself and um you know, really excited when when you when you really think about the position and the, the talent is at your disposal now. Uh, now that 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 guy has that has the position, so um, had I thought about it after Patrick Fanning um, stepping down, no, I, no, I hadn't. But obviously, when I was contacted and and I explored the option and explored the possibilities of what what can happen, uh, it really really excited me. And as I said, I'm absolutely delighted to have been chosen, and I want to give this job the. The respect it deserves, Liz, it's, it's a massive job. It's, it's one of the biggest jobs in Hurling and I'm really, really looking forward to it. Um, your uh, track record with, with Tipperary is absolutely fantastic and it is, this is a natural progression now, isn't it, up to the, this a senior um, job. Do you think it will be very different from what you've been doing up to now? Uh, I think it, it won't be very different, but it will present its challenges, Liz, both for me and, uh, and the players. Um, it's, it's, it's correctly, as you said, it's natural progression for me, and I think that it's, uh, it presents a brilliant opportunity for me to, to, to challenge myself. You know, I, I'm, I'm in the business over the last couple of years of challenging players to be the best they can be, and now it's a big, I want to continue to do that, obviously, but it's also a challenge for me to step up to uh, an inter county senior set up that the demands are that bit higher obviously than, than being involved with an underage team but it's a challenge that I'm going to really relish it's, it's my the model in which I I work off it today is, is not going to change a whole lot it's, it's going to have all the same principles that I've had in the past that have delivered that, that bit of success for me so um, yes the challenge will, will be uh, a little bit up in class a little bit more demanding but it's a challenge that I'm really looking forward to now your tip through and through. So you know, is it hard to walk away from the under twenty setup and and come to Waterford? <clears throat> yeah, I, I won't tell a lie, Liz. Um, you know, that's the type of person I am. I, I will record it as it is, and it was difficult. It's always difficult when you uh, when you step away from from your own. It's something that I haven't done before, obviously. But um, you know, but as you said earlier, it's it's natural progression for me. It's 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 uh, it's. I feel the time is right now for, for, for me to, to do that. I've done what I can at underage level in Tipperary. Um, you know, and I see I see this appointment as a real win win for both sides, both both Waterford Hurland and myself. I think we both challenge one another uh, accordingly and I think that uh, 
it will work well for both parties and, and you know I just want the people of Waterford to absolutely know that I'm I'm in this job 100% committed to to bring this thing to whatever level I can and I'm going to drive it on as, as, as absolutely as hard as I can for, for the next two years. Mikey Bevins is, is joining you as coach. You must be happy with that. Yeah, absolutely. Delighted. Mikey and I have worked together for the last number of years. He's a He's a really, a really, really important part of, of what I'm about and what we are about. Really, we're, we're, we work as a team. Um, you know, Mikey has, has proven himself t- as, as a coach, but Mikey, Mikey obviously was a, a really, really good player in his day as well. And you know, he's he's a guy that that played underage minor number twenty one, running with Tipperary and captains his, his club to Mivara to to two county finals. Uh, he's eight in total. So, so this man. Or might be small in stature, but I guarantee you one thing: he has the uh, decades to back up the the player he was uh, in his playing days, and he he brings that onto the coaching field as well. And he's really looking forward as well. I can tell you to getting stuck into to what has to be done here to to change this thing around. So um, the rest of your backroom team wasn't announced last night. There have been uh, rumours about Stephen Malumphy. Yeah, I, you know, this is a. Excuse me. This this is going to be um, a process that I'm not going to rush. Uh, I want to make sure, for certain, that I have the right people in the right jobs. Um, both Mikey and I are not not guys that um, you know go for big flamboyant backroom teams or anything to that effect. Um, the right people, as I said, will be in the right jobs to make sure that we create the proper environment for these players to perform. So um, <clears throat> these appointments are not going to be something that I'm going to do. Um, hastily or anything like that. Uh, I'm going to meet all, all, <clears throat> all these people that have that have uh, expressed an interest in being involved. I'm going to make sure that um, they're in, the, in these jobs for the right reasons. And uh, and I'm really looking forward to putting a really good group of people around me that will, will encourage these players to, to, to be the best they can be every night they come to training. And, and most of all, when they put on that Waterford jersey, that they'll, they'll have a standard to adhere to and represent themselves properly. And, and the Waterford people, as they look out across the fields when these guys play, will will be encouraged by what they see, and and um, that's the whole idea. For me to do that, I have to have the right people around me. So it's something I'm not going to do um, straight away, but I will I will have it done hopefully in the next two to three weeks. So watch this space. So what's your management style? I've I've heard you're um, a, a straight shooter. Well, I am. Yeah, i I'd like to think that I'm a guy that's. Uh, you know, in touch with the modern day, obviously number one. But I'm also very close to the traditional values that are required from time to time. Um, you know, I'm not finished all that long as, as a player myself, which would have been around the era of of being uh, fairly direct and <clears throat> man to man, hip to hip type hurling. But I'm also, you know, involved now in underage coaching for the last number of years. So you have no other choice but to move with with the way the modern game is moving. So I would like to think I'd have a, a good blend of both. But um, you know, I'd be a guy that, that will be fairly, fairly direct with my players, but also, um, also modern. But players will always know where they stand with me. Hopefully, over over my reign here as manager, and uh, there'll be no mixed messages or cross wires. Everybody will be singing off the same hymn sheet, and and if not, well then, sure, look, there'll be there'll be consequences, and that's the way it operates. If if um, there can only be one boss at the end of the day, and and uh, you know that's me, and. Uh, we we'll just have to see what way players react to the type of style I have. But the one thing I can be sure of is there's plenty of good holders in water, but that, that, that's what I'm absolutely convinced of. And, uh, you know, at the end of the day, if if, um, if I'm looking across at guys that are working really, really hard, uh, they might be the most talented players that are out there in water, but if they're the type of guys that are prepared to, to die in their boats to play senior hurling for water, well, then they, they go a long way to ticking the box for the type of player I look for. So that's what you'll be expecting from the players? Absolutely, absolutely. I haven't spoke to any player, obviously, as yet. I'm really looking forward to, to meeting these players, uh, I suppose, individually when I when I finalise my management team and we sit down and pick our initial panel. But I would believe that my panel will always be open-ended. At least that's, that's the whole idea. This panel will be open, open-ended. Um, anybody showing format or club will, will be considered. I know we're at the latter end of the county championship now in Waterford. And that's, that's, you know... Uh, how would you say? I wouldn't say it's a, it's <clears throat> it's a hindrance or anything to that effect for me. Um, uh, but it, I would have, I suppose, liked to have seen more of the club games in, in Waterford um, this year, in particular, to see what what is out there. But 
that's why the appointment of um, the selectors that are with me is important because they have to be guys that have a brilliant knowledge of water with hurling. They need to know that every player, they need to know every player that's out there because for me, uh, Liz, a, a new brush sweeps clean really. It's a case of of its open season now. So anyone that feels they have a, a, a chance or an opportunity or, or the desire to put their hand up to play senior hurling for Waterford, uh, I would be uh, I would be giving them that, that chance and that's for certain. Were you at the county final, uh, semi-finals on Sunday? Uh, I did. I went to see the county semi-finals Sunday, yeah, I did. Um, I went to both games and uh, saw the relegation final as well. And, you know, uh, the standard of hurling in Waterford is, is, is equally as good, if not better, than, than, than most counties around. And, you know, at the end of the day, that's been proven in the past with, with Waterford teams over the years that have, have gone on and, held themselves in, in very high esteem and most of the club championships so the, the club scene in Waterford is you know is healthy and it's 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 good and competitive and uh, I know Bally Gunner at the moment look like they're out there in front um, by, a, by a, a kind of a, a decent margin but having said that um, I would say that Dennis I will give a really really good count of themselves in the county final looking at what I saw on, on Saturday in Welch Park anyway Um you know that Waterford have had setbacks over the the last two seasons in the the championship, so it's a big challenge for you for twenty twenty. Yeah, it's a massive massive challenge, but it's it's a challenge that presents every inter county manager at the start of the year. Um, you know, I suppose we all feel that our our own our own house is is probably the worst, but it, it's not. They're the same challenges are presented in every other county. That that I can be sure of. Um, so, you know, for us. Going forward this year now is just a case of, um, of of bringing things back to basics, making sure we have the right management team, the right support people to create that environment for this squad to to improve and, and challenge them, and then to make sure that we have the right panel of players <clears throat> and the right players in the right positions. So it's a big job of work, but it's it's one that I said really really excites me. I am I'm really really looking forward to it, and. Um, you know, let's get back onto the field now and let's get going and let's see uh, what we can do with these players to um, to turn things around and make them really, really competitive for 2020. So you, you start now. <coughs> what are your initial plans, Liam? Uh, my initial plans is to is to pin down, obviously, uh, the management and back the backroom team selectors and, and backroom team, as I said, will be a, a tight, tight-knit group. It's not going to be a, a big flamboyant backroom team with big numbers around to that effect, uh, but it will be... It will take a little bit of pin and down. Um, it has to be water driven for me. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very dependent on that, and I believe that's the model that has to work. So it will be water driven. Um, that's that's number one. Um, number two, then, is to sit down and draw up a, a, a panel, initial panel. It's, as I said, it's not going to be the, the actual panel, but it'll be a panel to work off uh, to get things up and running, hopefully from early November. Uh, and then um, then we start we start really going at... Um, you know, various challenge games in Monster League, National Hurling League. It's really, really competitive this year with the with the group we're in, which is great. It gives us a real, real gives me a real, real great opportunity to test guys and see how they can perform uh, prior to championship. So, um, so that's that's basically the plan. And, and I suppose, you know, when we drop our initial panel, is I'm going to try and meet these players. I know I'm not going to try. I'm actually going to meet these players individually, one to one, and just just see whether where their mindset is at, and uh, most of all, to see where they're their belly and their stomach is at for what's going to lay down the tracks to, to make sure that we are competitive as we can be for 2020. What about, do you have any views on, you know, Walsh Park as a home venue for the, the championship? It was um, an issue last year. Yeah, I think Welsh Park, I, I'm very hopeful that Welsh Park will be the home venue for this year or for next year. I think Welsh Park, you know, is is where Waterford Hurling He's been renowned for being the home of Waterford Hurling. We have to make Welsh Park a really, really uh, uh, intimidating environment next year if that's where our two championship games are going to be. And I think every team that comes to Welsh Park, be it league or championship, <coughs> especially opposition team, have to have to know that they're in Welsh Park and in that, that environment that's uh, a tough place to get a result. So for me, the surroundings and the environment might be great from a, a, a spectator's point of view, but from a player's point of view, it, 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 it's still a pitch. It's still a pitch with... The same as any other, but it's a pitch that's going to have a different environment about it, hopefully in 2020, that these players will make it a really, really tough place for, for the opposition to come to. And that, that's that's the, the long and short of it, really, Liz, you know. 
And um, on your first day, what's your message for Waterford supporters this morning? Well, my message to Waterford supporters is that, you know, they have a, a guy here that's absolutely 100% committed to, to to doing a really, really good job, uh, you know, in, in the term I'll be there. I want the Waterford people to to have patience initially or I mightn't get in, get it right straight away. I know it's I know it is it's a it's a results driven game and that's that's I'm very, very aware of that and I've come into this job with my, my eyes wide open. But I suppose my message really is to the Waterford people that I, I really hope that they'll be looking out across the field this year at a Waterford team that they can be proud of that, that stands for something that represents what they're about or what Waterford Hurling is about, that has standards and absolutely respect and love the Waterford jersey and are going to want to show that in the way they play and and I can't guarantee that it's going to bring silverware that I can't guarantee but I can guarantee it that the Waterford people will have something to really look forward to and have a team that they're going to be proud of please God for 2020 that, that's my message we are blue and white we are WLR